Um, so, one more layout. So, we're going to use an ANOVA. The scenario is we have K treatments or K populations. The populations are normally distributed. Populations are independent. In other words, there shouldn't be any connection between this and that. And lastly, populations have identical variants. We call it homoscedasticity. Um, in practice, it won't be exactly the same, but it'll be approximately the same. So what is the purpose? If all these conditions are satisfied, then we can use ANOVA to form this test. No. So Same thing, you will see uh, sum of squares, mean squares, ratio between S's, um, um, R and S's, E, you have the F statistic, but the interpretation is different. In a one-way layout, what is the purpose? The purpose is to compare K different means. Are they all the same, or is at least one of them different from the rest. We know that is a caveat of ANOVA. ANOVA can only tell you if one or more of the means are different, but it cannot tell you which ones are different. Same thing with multiple linear regression. It can tell you at least one of the betas is not zero, but it cannot tell you which one is not zero. And that's when we did a confidence interval to see if one of them could be zero or not. So, same logic. Conditions must be satisfied. Then we can use um, ANOVA to perform that test. Let's say in cancer is a serious illness, um, hair loss after chemo. Good. Um, inches per week. Yes. Let's say we have four different treatments. Good. Drug treatment. It's chemo treatments. I'll just call it A, B, C, D for simplicity. Yes. One of the manufacturers um, insists that their chemo treatment doesn't have a lot of helps. Okay. Let's which one you pick? Should it be A, B, C, or D? C? Okay. Right. In my example, K is full. Good. And I'm going to have a bunch of observations. Let's say um, sample one, I gave uh, 
72 patients, treatment A. Sample two, 38 patients. Sample three, 67 patients. Sample four, 89 patients. So you can see the sample sizes can be different, not a big deal. Then I have the sample means. The next condition is theoretically they need to have identical variability. Um, so let me just make something up. Identical variance, square the standard deviation, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, 0.11. Point, point they needn't be exactly the same in practice they're not going to be exactly the same but that is our assumption they are close to each other now Hector wanted company C to do great in terms of uh, handles the average handles with treatment a is 2.5 inches per week. The average handles for treatment B is 2.31 inches per week. The average handles for treatment C is 2.01 inches per week. For four, 2.12 inches per week. With me so far? Yes? Hector, what do you think? Is company C doing well? Hector things, company C or drug C is great. How loss, if you use treatment C, then you have less how loss. That is, that's what Hector wanted, which is why I designed the problem that way. Who else thinks that C is going to be effective? Better than the rest. Everyone here? Ask me, Hector. Do you think company C is the best? I do not know. So do I know? No, because we're dealing with variability. 72 individuals, 38, 67, 89. Different people, oh, different people, different counts, and different populations. All I've said is, I have independent populations in the sense patient in this group doesn't also receive a drug from C, independent. Approximate variance, but just because this mean is less than A, B, and D, it doesn't imply that mean is effective there. It's a fundamental principle of statistics. Just because this is smaller than the rest doesn't imply that it is the best. Reason being, you have to account for variability. So I don't know, but how can I conclude or come to a conclusion based on evidence I come back, perform an ANOVA? If, when I do ANOVA, I reject the null, then at least one of the means is different, yes? And naturally we can pick up which one is different. Does that make sense? So we can't be fooled by just numbers. Um, when I say normally distributed, this is what I mean. I want a bell curve. The data must satisfy a bell curve. Put a box plot. 
something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the center here is 2.01. This is for treatment C. Right? Um, 2.01. The other is 2.12. I'll use red for D, so that's treatment C. Hopefully this is red. Oh, it is. That's also a bell cap, but it shifted a bit. Right, its mean is different. But from the curve, you can see there is an overlap between the two. Yes, you cannot tell if D is actually better than C. Do you agree? Because there is some overlap. There is a chance that they could be the same. Are you with me? Now, what is a case where I can basically erase this? Clearly distinguish and conclude one is different than the rest. C. A, B, D. So I can say that A, B, and D, those treatments behave in a similar manner. Do you agree? C stands up. Yes. This is a case where I do not need a test because clearly C is different from the rest. But anytime you have an overlap, then we want to know, we want to count, account for that randomness. And that's why we need a test. Does that make sense? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second example from the textbook. <clears throat> 